<laughs> oh boy. Um, I'm pretty red right now. Thanks for that introduction, Mithil. I did not expect that, and I did not ask for it either. <laughs> It's a long. Oh God, it's so embarrassing. Um, okay, I'll. Um, I'm just writing down the agenda for today's presentation. So the first one was all me, and I think Mithil done that for me. Um, so I was. Um, I was going to start with. Um, uh basically telling you a bit about myself particularly as far as ebird is concerned it was in um 2013 for the great backyard bird count i think I, and i was in manipur at the time and suhail had called up um asking um if i would be uploading lists to ebird i think ebird was pretty new to india um at that point and um i i started adding lists to ebird in around that time and i would probably do a list a week sometimes a list a month and then completely forget about it for the longest time because you had to go on to the computer and type in a list and you know i didn't have an android phone or anything um and i think a year later i got like an android phone had bird log and listing became more of a habit uh, so maybe went from once a month every now and then to once a week um but i still found it fairly boring very often <laughs> actually and it wasn't until um late 2015 when ebird introduced um media um and you could suddenly add sounds and photos to your checklists um that it became really exciting to me because suddenly it wasn't just a place where i could have my lists it was a place where i could i could have my bird birding trips in like on like a single web page you know instead of writing to all these email lists and things like that or putting a photo on facebook they were suddenly a one stop um source for all that information so i think at least at a personal level as far as using ebird is concerned for me media adding media to uh, being able to add media to ebird lists was the game changer um for me and that's when i got hooked on to ebird um per se All right so um what i'll do now is um i just quickly run you through what we're going to discuss today um we're going to start with um i'm just going to take you around the eword website onto the explore media pages um illustrated checklists um discuss those um just briefly um and then go on to um sorry and then go on to um I'm going to put up I so I've gone into my records today and um um added a list from 2011 um I had to go through four hard drives to find photos I haven't added to eBird and then um so I've added a list from November 2011 and we'll build that list together all of us and in doing so go through the various features of eBird um manage media and um use merlin for some of the tougher birds um for those of you who don't know merlin um is an app that you can use to identify birds um it identifies birds from photos um but there's also a step by step process where you can describe a bird um in a few steps and it'll give you the possible um possibilities that you like to expect given your parameters um in the place you're at in the season you're in um so we'll go through all of that and um and yeah and every now and then i just pause so feel free to put in your questions um and uh, you know we'll try and answer them as we go along rather than at the end of the session cool so we'll start now hang on a second i'll just share my screen i right, can everybody see my screen now yeah can i view yep all right great So that's eBird. Um, change it to eBird India, and um, yeah, a lovely photograph of a little king crow. Um, going to explore. Um, so, if you haven't been here yet, um, it's uh, the explore explore page of eBird is where all the action usually is. um you can spend hours and hours just going through lots of um, ebird outputs and and well photographs and things like that um on this section of ebird bar charts um, um regional lists and hotspots and things like that 
Um, so when you get to explore generally, you have the media page here. This is where the massive Macaulay collection is. So you can see 17 million plus, almost 18 million photographs on there. Um, 0.72 million, uh, 7,23,000 audio. See, I've become so Australian. I've st started using millions and things and talks of lakhs and crores really confuse me now. Um, so I'm going to stick to that. The 723,000 audio and a lot of videos. I think a lot of them got added recently because IBC merged with, or HBW merged with um, eBird. Um, so, so. Um, so on this page, um, we'll go into India. So you can filter one of the easiest ways. So let's say if I'm looking for images of um, jungle babblers from India, um, well, they'll only be from India because they're an endemic to the subcontinent. Oh, it might be found in Bangladesh and Pakistan. But if I go filter down to, let's say, India, you'll see the images from India. So, you know, close to over half a million um, photos, 30,000 or so audio files. Um, I can sort it by best quality. Um, enter my species. So I really used to these um, short form codes now. So Juba would be jungle babbler. And uh, you will see, sorry. Um, you'll see, for example, all the jungle babblers turn up uh, from India on your media page. Um, I normally like this grid view, but a lot of people might prefer the uh, list results, where, which gives you the links to the eBird checklist and the Macaulay library um, side by side or the gallery, which doesn't give you any of the other details, but um, makes the whole thing really compact. And you can go through all the photos from here. Um, I think uh, I really enjoyed it, um, the idea of seeing so many photos in one place. And I don't know if you've been to these websites, you have to click one by one to go through all the photos. I think it was such a refreshing change to have something like um, the media library on eBird uh, come live onto the website. Um, and it's kind of like an archival, uh, you know, like a, like a huge archive essentially of, of specimens and collections, but in the digital format. Um, right. Any questions so far at all? None, none. Uh, none? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that, you know, um, you can do with, uh, and I often imagine doing it, but I've never gotten around to actually um, sort of play around with the library enough is, is for example, with Jungle Babblers, um, for those of you who might know, and BirdCon India has a nice article on it actually uh, by Chin Mei, um, is that Jungle Babbler have, have, have these uh, various subspecies in India, right? So they've got, um, I think even if you type in, so you get to see jungle, there's a striata group, there's a somavillai, and then there's the malabaricus uh, found in the southern western Ghats. And things like the eBird um, media gallery can actually help you go through all of these um, subspecies um, separately. But even for species that don't have this, uh, um, like if you're interested in seeing where one subspecies starts, when, where one subspecies ends, instead of looking at these old maps, which we now know are not always true or are not dynamic the way eBird is, uh, the eBird media library is a great thing to go through because it's dynamic, it's up to date. Um, and the, the documentation is there in front of you to, to, to check, you know, what species is what species or what subspecies is what subspecies. So for example, some species groups, um, which eBird, this kind of a media library can really help, uh, you know, clear confusion over could be things like um, where greater Kukul starts and where it ends or where southern Kukul ends or where the transition zone is by looking at photographs. Um, things like Indian Nathach and ch ch chestnut bellied Nathach, which are always very confusing, you know, especially if you're in the foothills, at what point does chestnut bellied Nathach become Indian and what point does Indian become chestnut bellied or is there an overlap? So all of those things, if you go through uh, libraries such as these or archives such as these, um, they're very easy to answer these questions. And if somebody wants to take up those projects, that would be pretty amazing. Is my screen stuck? Okay, no, the lag. Okay. Um, all right. So um, the other cool thing about um, eBird Media is, is the idea of um, having regional checklists and illustrated checklists. If you haven't tried it yet, you should. 
so i'll look into udp and um ramit there is one question yes go on before you go ahead a uh, um, savitri singh is asking if i do not know the subspecies does bird ebird classify the birds uh, images oh uh, no it doesn't so you can um, when you add your checklist you can uh, choose the overarching subspecies so i'll, I'll take the greater cuckoo as an example so you can normally add greater cuckoo and um, if you let's say you are in kerala and you know there's a cuckoo you'll find the southern cuckoo so you can choose greater cuckoo southern it's actually in ebird it's a concept called issf so identifiable subspecies form i think that's what it stands for but the idea being the subspecies are divided on the basis of things that you can actually identify in the field not necessarily on the basis of range um but no it doesn't automatically classify things as subspecies um you can take it as a full species um and with illustrated checklists um all your images that you add of course go into um this checklist for let's say in this case udupi where i used to live um you can see every uh, species has its top rated audio top rated image um and top and its bar chart right next to it um so it's one place actually if you have, we'll talk about this later how to um, i'd mentioned it in the introduction also how to rate ebird media but basically the top rated ebird media for that region is the one that shows up on the illustrated checklist so i um, and we'll go through the idea of um uh, why rating ebird uh, media is very important uh, to do so honestly as well um because you know every now and then uh you get images like these that show up as the best image for the region but it clearly isn't and i know that i don't know how that's a five star image yeah we'll push it down um so things like these um but we'll talk about them in detail um but yeah so the illustrated checklist shows you all the top rated audio top rated photographs and it generally looks very nice um and it's even your photographs that make that um possible right so um i hope you all know how to go into your checklists uh, you go into my ebird and you go into manage my observations and um and then go into the checklist that you're looking for this is a checklist i uploaded earlier today actually about one hour ago um from the photos i could find from my hard drives um now before i continue actually um make a good point one of the reasons i actually really liked ebird um getting the media option was that the file limit is something like 10 mb and you know over the years i i i showed you earlier um i've accumulated these hard drives and there are only some of them with like heaps and heaps of images um so just massive gigabytes of images and then i you know for example trogs doesn't have something like ebird unfortunately but when i have to look for a certain photo of a frog i have to go through all of these hard drives remember which date it was and then go through the hundreds of images i took on that day look for that particular image and it's just a pain um and with ebird it's just beautiful cuz i can just add my you know images the full the full size jpeg image essentially to to my checklist and then download it at any future time and you know be able to um it's such a good reference point and a good archival process not only for for others to look at but from at a personal level as well um and i i am really thankful for that those hard drives would have been terrible otherwise um right So this is the list I uploaded. I think so. Before we get here again, any questions at all that I've been missing out on? Yes, there are a few, Ramesh. Yeah. So uh, Lakshmi Kant Neve is saying that uh, he shares photographs from mobile on eBird. That is, he transfers from camera, and he's not aware about quality of such photos. How what are the qualities like? um assuming that uh, the photographs on your mobile are the same quality as they would be on the desktop or your laptop it shouldn't matter if you if you're taking a photo from a camera and unless you're resizing it it'll be the same quality on eBird um cuz it stores the original image um so i don't know if you've been to uh, for example when you go to an image um, i'll choose my image here sorry So when you go to an image um 
and you go to the ml asset page so when you go to the macaulay library page here um you will notice that there's the option to download the original so i can download my image um, afterwards and that will normally be the same size um next question is do does ebird have any specification regarding image dimension and size um no no not that i know of i think any dimension is fine um i think there's a limit to how how big an image can be but we'll get to that um is there a specific reason why nearly all such species that we report remain unconfirmed um i let ashwin answer that question oh there you go matt matt has answered so the file limit is 10 mb per photograph and macaulay library encourages observer to upload higher resolution images yep um as for mahati's question um that's a reviewing question i think some of these some, one of these sessions will have the answer to that question um cool okay um so i'm on my list now which is here ramesh one last question Yes. Uh, before you move, on, Savitri Singh is asking, can I add images even if I do not have list for that day? This is with regards to historical images and list. So, okay. So in this case, I didn't have a list for that day, which is why it's an incomplete list. My list is essentially based on the images I've taken from that day, from that outing, bird walk, whatever you want to call it. And I use the historical protocol because I was birding. Um, I can use the incidental protocol for. but you know how the ever protocols the way they work is incidental essentially means you were not birding um and you happen to chance upon a bird um or you happen to look at a bird um but historical i use the historical protocol because it fits my purpose better i want to specify that i actually was birding but thankfully i remember none of the details uh, from that bird walk my only point of reference is the image uh, are the images i took on that day um and thanks to matt for for pitching in with the relevant links over there um now once i'm on this uh on my list um and i want to add the images i've prepped up my images over here as you can see um i'm really bad images so there's pied bush chat chestnut tail starling there was a golden oriole image but it was so bad i didn't even want to show you guys um and there's a shikra pea fowl something so we'll upload this to my list now and there's multiple ways of doing it and there's not multiple ways of doing it it's the one basic way of doing it you get into add media and you go into this very cool looking manage media um interface right and here you'll see all the specifications that you asked for so essentially you're expected to put in high resolution images without watermark um maximum 10 mb um i must um also say uh I don't. Uh, I would recommend not cropping your images too tight. Uh, keep it. Um, keep the bird in essentially. Keep the bird in the image. Uh, make sure that the bird is visible in the image, um, unless you're trying to upload a habitat image, which is um, a different case altogether. And um, as a reference point, um, if you look at all the top-rated images on Macaulay. Um, Oh, it's very hard, yeah. I get this. The Zoom dashboard keeps coming in the way of my tabs. Sorry. So if you look at all the top-rated images in the eBird gallery, which you should go through anyway, just for some good enjoyment, um, these are the kind of crops uh, you're expected to have. So a decent amount of space around the bird. Don't don't cut it too close. Um, but yeah, keep some keep some give it some breathing space. Um, okay. So this is my manage media interface. Um, there are two ways to add photos. I normally keep my window completely maximized. So normally, how I end up adding photos is by going on, let's say, add media, and what I'll do is I'll add a bronze strong go. Right. So I don't remember where I put this. There we go. Yes. So I go into my bronze strong go. I select my bronze drongo image. I open, and then it gets added over here. Um, another way of doing it, which is far easier, and I'm trying to move to this model, is that you just click drag and drop. So pied bush chat goes into pied bush chat. Chestnut tail starlings go into chestnut tail starlings. Um, shikra, for example, goes into shikra, and my peafowl goes into peafowl. 
Now, as these are being uploaded, you'll see the little uploading bar over here. Um, you can cancel if you made a mistake. And we'll make some deliberate mistakes later on, um, just to check out a few other things um, as far as rating, uh, adding media is concerned. So once, these, once this media has been added, what I usually do is I go into grid view, so I can see the media I've added. Um, if you've got audio, videos, or, or photos, you can specifically choose those also. In this case, I've only got photos, so I'll only, I'll, it's not relevant to me overall. Um, and if I click on this, um, I go into this page for individual images where I can add the metadata uh, for each image. Now the metadata I add over here reflects in the tags that I can see in the media library. So when you go into more filters, you'll see all of these um, options like the age, um, sex, behaviors, dating. So if I pick behavior flying, and flying females of God knows how many species, You'll see, I'll get photos of flying females of various species on each bird. And all of those filters, essentially, you can help feed by marking the appropriate option in these individual image page. Um, so just to give an example, this is clearly an adult male beef fowl. Um, there's no additional species in the frame, but you know, very often you have multiple species in the same frame. And actually it's an issue because um, I know I have, I've done it in the past. I'll actually show you. Um, but when you have, let's say, if I had another blight seed, or uh, well, not a blight seed, but Indian golden, or, or, sorry, a golden oriole or something in this place. So I'll add an Indian golden oriole, and automatically that will get tagged as Indian gold, golden oriole over there. Um, but in this case, so it's an adult male peafowl. It's not doing anything, so I wouldn't really pick a behavior. Um, there's no tags required for this again, because it's, it's not a field notes. Again, a lot of our older lists have field notes. Um, some of the images have just eggs in them with a the bird, or they're a big habish, habitat shot. If it was maybe a zoomed out shot, I could have picked habitat, but I'll choose not to in over here. Um, nest or bird in hand, just pick the appropriate option. Um, I would call this a two star image. Um, again, I'll go through the media rating things and we'll, okay, we'll rate these together afterwards. But you get the point. And then you can, Go on to the next image. In this case, a shikra. Um, this shikra is a juvenile shikra because you can see there's a clear measles stripe and dots all over the place and things. So I'll put in a sex unknown because I can't sex it um, and a juvenile. Um, I can add, for example, any notes like staring at me. And I know this word eventually flew off because I can see from the photo staring at me and I probably spooked it. So whatever you want to write. Um, Again, none of these apply here, but when they do, please do use them. Um, and so on um, and so forth. Can I just add into this? When you yes. drag and drop media, you can also drag multiple images of the same species, right? Like, so if you have 10 photographs of Correct. five bush chats, you can just select all 10 and drag and drop to the five bush chats. Correct, correct. And I will show you that. Uh, that's why I've kept my two Blythe Reed Wobbler images and I will make a mistake with them also and I'll show you how, how Merlin works in that case. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, that's okay. Um, and similarly, Bronze Drongo, blah, 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 adult, sex unknown. Uh, I'll just quickly go through the ones. So in this case, for example, uh, there's a lot of chestnut tail starlings here. I've actually marked this as an X in my list, but you can literally count them if you really wanted to. So I, have, I would guess, for example, there are at least 30 birds here and I can mark 30 unknown adult, uh, sex unknown adults. And um, no option for flock or anything, but yeah, so something like that, I can let it be. And go on to, again, a female, adult female white bush chat. Really bad photo, but uh, yeah, and so on and so forth. Right, so we have marked all the tags that we can apart from the ratings, which we'll come to later. Um, I think we'll do it now if you want. Um, any questions so far that I can answer? Otherwise, we'll move on to ratings. All good? Yeah, no cool. question. One question is from, yeah, uh, Mahati, that I think I'll let Ashwin answer towards the end. Okay. Yeah, so with, with, with one question now. 
yeah. one of the things with videos is i think some of the users have access to video not all users do um but i think matt and all have actually explained that so it's still in a testing phase and yeah so i'm sorry you'll get to see some of these features but it's pretty exciting cuz you know what's coming um at some point so you can add parmel is asking can we add both yes. media image and video yes i've video. done i've done it with uh, with images and audio so it definitely is possible cool all right so i'll go back to dropping some other random stuff now um so what have i got left i'll remove this filter so i've got blight street wobbler and i've got green wobbler now if i select two blight street wobbler images i'll put them into green wobbler and i'll put my green wobbler into my blight street wobbler um So as they're being uploaded, um, I won't add any tags because again they're testing, but uh, they're just test images. I click done, and now my my checklist has become this beautiful marvel to look at with images accompanying the species I've seen. I can only click on I can click on this to see all the species that I have photos on. Um, if you've got audio, there's another species with audio link that appears. Um, now very often. um by accident or simply because you were un unable to identify the bird in this case obviously i was unable to identify the bird um you'll get an e email from a reviewer saying please move your observations to the relevant species so i'll get an email from let's say ashwin um and he'll ask me to move my obvious blight street wobbler images from the green wobbler to the appropriate species uh, which is blight street wobblers um now earlier what used to happen was you had to delete this these images from here um and then add those images back again to the relevant species but now what you can do is i go into my green wobbler and i use this button here called change species and it will give me the option of move my entire observation my media counts breeding codes and details i don't have any details so i wouldn't want to meet them but i really want to just move my media so i move my media to the correct option which is blight seed wobbler I get blight seed wobbler here and i change click on change and beautiful now i have blight seed wobbler at the in the right species name i click save and you will now notice that uh, my blight street wobbler is in with my with the right header um unfortunately um ashwin being the absolutely brilliant reviewer that he is he goes through images regularly and he goes into explore media which should be somewhere of oh, sorry search photos and sounds he's looking for green wobbler images or Oh, so he's going through blight street wobbler images and he's trying to figure out if somebody's made a mistake so he goes through this image and he's like ah that's a green wobbler so he reports this or if you have the you know functionality or if he's a reviewer he emails me directly saying this green wobbler is obviously this uh, blight street wobbler is obviously a green wobbler so you should please change it so i go back to my checklist um and now I don't want to move all of my observations because I realize what happened here is that there's actually two blight seed wobblers here and a green wobbler here. I don't want to move all my observations in one go to a green wobbler. So that is also easy to do. And you just go on to your blight seed wobbler. You click on change species for the just that image, change species identification to green wobbler. Move it to the appropriate um species click change and you're good to go and now i have a list that everyone's happy with including myself cool any questions so far um now the other thing um Okay, now we'll go back to rating, rating my audio. Um, um I do want to. One second, Ramit. Yeah. There is one question from uh, Subo. How come we cannot download any other eBird uh, images? 
Um, essentially, because I think that you, you can still view other eBird images, but you can only download your own media because that's your media. Um, I think it's got, it must have something to do with the copyright, okay. the way it's done. Yeah. And uh, Matt has told that there is a new way to uh, uh -huh. upload images. Uh, he's trying to tease you, yes, checking whether you know. So I don't know if I know or not, but see, one of the new things I recently realized was this thing. If I go to the Macaulay ML asset page, so you know when I'm in the, I don't know. <laughs> so when I go into view all for my photos, let's say, um, now there are all my photos here and I go on to my green wobbler page by clicking on the Macaulay library thing here. Um, I've noticed there's an edit button here now. And if I click on this, it takes me straight to my checklist and my manage media portal in my checklist, which is pretty cool. Is that correct? Oh, beautiful, I passed. Um, so if I want to fix this green wobbler and I'll add the tags now, um, so I don't know if it's an, it's an sex unknown and it's an adult, so I'll add it here. It's probably a really bad image. Um, and in this case, I actually can add a tag, which is foraging or eating. I know it was foraging. It looks like it must have been foraging. So I'll add a foraging tag. Um, similarly for this Bly Street Wobbler. Oh yes, one way of adding tags. So I know these all these birds were foraging. I can select all of them. I do this on my Mac using the command key. I think in a Windows you can do it with the control key. Otherwise also you can select, select, oh sorry. Oh, I think you have to use a command key or a control key to select multiple ones. So you select them. And you can, they're all one star images to me. Um, and you can mention that they're all foraging. And I know they're all adults, but I also know that they're all, uh, I can't really sex them. So there. So I've added tags effectively to three different images um, together. Um, this is, you know, probably in, in images, I don't use it that much, but it's super useful in audio where you have to like, you know, add the, the equipment used and whether you use playback or not. And most of those answers are always the same. So you can use, um, you can apply the same answers to all of them, but using this method, or just there's an option called apply to others. Um, anyway, coming back to this, any questions so far? Does it, does it all make sense? Have I missed anything? Uh, Ramit, can you uh, show uh, uh, Sanjeev Khanna is asking, how can I check total number of media uploaded by me? Okay, easy. So, um, okay. so this, this is me. Actually, we'll do you. So Sanjeev Fena. Let me know if I'm spelling it right. Is that correct? Yes. Great. So I can see that you have uploaded 2,377 images and 258 audio uh, media files. Um, sometimes, the default view might be that it doesn't show you the, uh, it only shows the confirmed uh, photographs. And then you'll see there's a lesser number, but to see total images, just click on show unconfirmed and you'll have all your images over here. Um, while we're doing this, we might as well go through some other tags that we I use very often to look at things. So if I want to rate images, so let's say I want to rate Sanjeev Khanna's images, I go on the ones with no rating and rate them accordingly as I go through these images, right? Um, another thing I often use, I want to look at his best rated images. So I click on best quality here and it'll rate by quality um, the entire gallery, right? Um, similarly, we want to look at least rated or newest first, oldest first. Um, and so there's a variety of options and a variety of ways you can look at um, the gallery that you have in front of you. Does that answer the question though? Is that what you wanted to know, sir? Yes. Yeah, okay, great. Um, so that's when you're doing it. Now we'll come to rating images. Um, one more question. Yeah. How to know for which species of mine I haven't uploaded any media? Ah, oh, good question. See, I had completely forgotten you could do this but this is something I do very often. So you're going to explore again, the, the hub of eBird um, and you go into target species. 
Now, if you're a Twitcher, you probably know this page really well because you would have at some point. So let's say I want to look at, this is personalized to myself. So I want to, let's say, look at in India, which are the species that I've seen, but I haven't photographed. So first I go into region India for my India life list. There's a little settings button here. I click on that, targets category, species you haven't seen, species you have seen but haven't photographed, species you have seen but you haven't audio recorded. So I click on species I have seen uh, but I haven't photographed. Click on show target species. And here you go. I'm pretty sure I've photographed some of these birds. But anyway, <laughs> um, you have a list of the species which are essentially my photo targets. Similarly, you can change it to my audio. I can look at my audio targets. Oh, here you go. Or my life list targets, which is unfortunately it's an illness, but I spend a lot of time looking at my target list. Uh, so species you haven't seen. And again, you can change this for, you know, if you're a year lister, you can click on year list. So things I haven't seen this year or in a certain time of the month that you're expecting. So if I'm going to, let's say, um, India in the month of June, and I want to look at, you know, what am I likely to see in that time of the year? So I click on, go on June, go on June. Let's say in June for my India year list, whatever I have not seen, pretty much every single species in India is what I have not seen. That's found in June. So things like these, um, again, there's a lot you can do, just to have a play and, um, it's a lot of fun to go through these things, especially photographers for missing images. Uh, if you if you know you've taken photographs, but you haven't uploaded them to eBird, this is a really good way of sort of finishing up your galleries on eBird. Um, okay, what's my next thing? Right, so I've made my mistake. Right, okay, so I'm back on my list. Right, so how, how many of you have used eBird? Uh, sorry, have used Merlin so far? Wait a few. Okay. Sorry. I completely forgot. I keep talking about ratings and I never go up, go back to rating my images. Um, so with with ratings, I can I'm not going to spend any time rating other people's photos because I don't want you to judge me. But I'm happy with you judging my photos instead. Um, I don't want you to judge. I don't want you to see me judge your photos. Sorry, that's okay. Um so with with ratings, I'm gonna use some of my photos as an example. Okay. So how rating works is basically um, eBird works on a community rating level. So you, I always make sure I rate my own images and then hope that other people also rate my images um, honestly. But it, it works on an essentially, uh, I think it works on on honesty um, and you can't see who's rated what so use that anonymity to your advantage um, but um, the photos there's a nice help page on on eBird that gives you the guidelines for rating these photos um, I've got a few images here which I think are you know it should represent each star um, so this is a silver gull that I think is a five-star image. It shows the bird properly. It's um, there's nice space around the image, um, and there's good light, and it shows the features really well. So I think it's a, it deserves a five-star. Um, then there's a brown goshawk. Again, these are all images that I've taken recently because it it was very hard for me to come up with examples from elsewhere, which I think is a four-star image. It's a sharp image, has space around it. You can see most features, but the light could be better. You know, there's, there's improvements to be made. <laughs> so I've given it a four star. Similarly, this is a golden whistler. Um, it's actually a little out of focus, but I like the fact that it's it's a full-sized image again, and um, you can see the bird really well. Um, so I've given it a three star. This is an olive whistler. If you can see it through the bushes, then you can see it. But again, because of that reason alone, I've given it a two star, because it's a really obscured image. But you're looking at basically, if you get the gist of it, you're looking at whether the light is good, whether um, how sharp the image is, how much it fills the frame, um, is it visible or not? Uh, so for example, some of my other one star images include this greenish wobbler, which is out of focus altogether. I actually didn't know there was a greenish wobbler in there. Um, I just zoomed in and I found it. This is a one star image. 
of Malabar parakeets because it's very distant and essentially just for documentation. And this is my favorite one star image. It's taken through a scope of a Terex sandpiper, if you can make out where that is. But again, it's meant for documentation and it gets a one star from me. Somebody has given it, been more generous with it. Um, so good, good for them. Um, but you get the idea. And on that basis now, I'll actually just quickly rate the images in the list I made, which I've actually lost. Great. Oh, here it is. Um, so I go into manage media. So all my species are here. Um, does somebody want to just on chat quickly type what ratings they would give this? I might, I may or may not uh, take your advice on this. <laughs> so this probably I'll give it a two star because uh, it's oh um, it's a little bit of obscured and and probably not as good looking as you think. So this is a I really like this image personally. So I'll give it a three star. Cool. All of you guys are really nice. Yeah. Thanks. Um, this is actually a pretty bad image. It's uh, lo low resolution, pretty blurred. The light's terrible. Um, so two star there. I'm also a harsh critic. So this is deservedly a one star image. Um, <laughs> um, two for the Drongo. Yes, correct, correct. Um, this one again, a two star, I think. Because you can make out, you can make out the bird pretty well, but it's not terrible. Um, this one's a one star. The bird itself is shaky. Um, you can't actually tell it's a green wobbler very easily unless you go through it. I'll give this a one star. Again, I actually like this image because it shows the flock, but you tend to give the ratings um, on the basis of how well you can see the individual birds. At least that's what I believe is correct. Uh, if somebody can correct me, please do so. So in this case, I'll give it a one star, even though it's a sharp image. You can actually not tell their chestnut tail starlings until, unless and until I tell you uh, chestnut tail, that it's a chestnut tail starling, you know, one star. Um, the other thing I want to just clarify is very often, you know, I feel terrible. Like with that um, Terex sandpiper, this Terex sandpiper became the first ever Terex sandpiper for Tasmania, which is why I've documented it at all. Um, and, um, so I want to give it a five star, but unfortunately the ratings, ratings you should be giving on the basis of the quality of the photo, irrespective of the bird that's in it. Um, does that make sense? Cool. Um, any questions so far? Yeah, all good, we'll move on. I think uh, Matthew had posted something uh, earlier, uh, and yeah. uh, I forgot to mention that we have uh, we have two people from uh, Cornell's team. I think Matthew and is Drew also there? Yeah, Drew. Drew is online. I I saw him earlier. Yeah, at least. So would you like to quickly just introduce them? I'm sorry, Matthew. Yes. Cool. Yes, because because Matthew's been also because Matt's been really active. So Matt and Drew um, are actually. So Drew works on um, works with the Merlin team, and Matt works with uh, Macaulay, and they're both here um, on this webinar, and they're they're logging in from Ithaca, where the Cornell lab is situated. Um, yes, yeah, so which is why they they know a lot of things here, and um, as you can see, Matt's actually been uh, posting all the relevant links and information on the group chat. Uh, um, yeah, as we go along. So Matt has posted that. Uh... Can, Ramit, can you also show the My Media button and also the Save Spreadsheet option? Where is that? Sorry. Um, My Media button. Where is the My Media button? Can Can we unmute Matt? <laughs> yeah. So Badra, can you unmute my Matt? <laughs> I'm trying to remember where the My Media button was. I forgot. Okay. Um, so if you go to search, uh, you go to Media Search. Uh, yep. uh, good afternoon, everybody. Hi, Matt. Around if you go to search. Yeah. And then um, just to the right of the search bar, uh, there's the, the My Media icon. Oh. It's um, just above 
above. That's correct. Oh yeah. Yep. Cool. So if you click the my media button, that's one of my favorite things. I have it bookmarked. I have it bookmarked for my media, and then I switch over and I sort by best quality, and I occasionally admire my my media. Ah, um, super. And then uh, one, once you've done my media, uh, a nice combination is to do the my media, and then. Uh, over on the very right side, uh, there's a small link that says save spreadsheet. Uh, so you can you can download a spreadsheet instantly um, of all your media that you've contributed to Ebert and Macaulay. How cool is that? Hang on, I actually didn't know that. I think it's very cool. <laughs> yep, yeah, awesome. Um, shouldn't have clicked download, I think. Oh, well, it's happening now. Um, I'll show you what my spreadsheet later. But yeah, okay, so that's uh, nifty. Normally when I have to go into my media, as you can see, uh, I just normally click here. <laughs> um, but yes, so this is a really cool option. If you click on my media, it takes you to your media and save spreadsheet gives you a spreadsheet, which we'll see once it's downloaded. It's a pretty big spreadsheet. Sorry about that. Um, okay, right. Now I actually wanted to come to Merlin. Um, I, will first show you how many people here can identify this bird straight away. So, okay. okay, a lot of people can, I'm sure. But either, either which way, my point being, um, I'm just gonna set up uh, my phone on this share screen. Just a second. Sweet. Can everybody see my phone? Yes. Yes. Oh, wait. Yes. Damn it. Sorry. No. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. My mistake. Yep. Can you see it now? Yes. Great. So um, I'll quickly go into Merlin and show you some cool things. Oh, wait. Can, is, is, my, is my phone screen moving to the side? It's in the middle. Yeah, it's in the middle. Oh, it's in the middle. Okay, cool. Um, so my camera has come on, and now you're looking at my my screen as such. And um, I'm not going to do it through here. So anyway, so this is my way I keep my bird apps normally. And I click on Merlin. Um, got a random bunch of locations over there. Sorry about that. So that's my Merlin homepage. I know it looks different on Android in some aspects, um, but this is how it looks for me um, on an Apple phone. Um, it's got, normally when you download this app and it's available on your, on your Google Play or app, Apple App Store, um, the first thing you would probably want to do is you go into bird packs, right? And here you will see that there's a bunch of bird packs from all across the world. And here's India. And India has the full India pack, which I've installed. It's got Andaman and Nicobars, Northern India, um, Northeast, Northwest, and South India. Um, and I've installed a few of those. So once you install the relevant bird packs, you actually get um, all your birds at the tips of your fingertips. So at the tips of your finger, at your fingertips, there you go. Um, and you'll notice, uh, for example, you can select which pack you want. So I can select all my installed birds, which also shows Australian birds, or I can select, this is South India. And then it shows me all the South Indian birds over here. And for those of you who have, can you also see my computer screen? No. No, not at all. Ah, I see. But for those of you who have visited the Explore Species page um, on the Explore, um, Explore thing, um, you will yeah, you will notice that there's all these species have a bunch of photos and a bunch of audio like selected audio um, as well as text. All of that is mirrored in the uh, Merlin app. So for example, if I was to click on, let's say, I'm gonna pick a random species. Okay, maybe not that random. Um, let's say orange-headed thrush or tickled thrush. 
then you will notice then I get a description of that bird. I get a selection of photographs uh, showing different plumages. So there's male, there's a female, female again, there's a chick and there's a female and a kind of habitat kind of shot, right? Um, I can also listen to the song. Can you hear that? Yes. So there's different types of calls. And so there's the ID info, there's the images, there's sounds, and there's the map from the handbook of the birds of the world, which shows uh, for most of the species um, in this case. So it's a pretty nifty little app. Um, it's, you would have noticed I invested in a few Australian field guides <laughs> when I first came here. And honestly, since the Australian pack was released on, on Merlin, I haven't ever gone back to the field guides. Um, when I'm on my phone, it's just so easy to get to this um, instead. Um, it's particularly nice because let's say if I was to, as you can see, all my lists are from home nowadays. Um, when I'm also on the move, let's say I'm going to a new place. Um, I click on, let's say I want to add a Pacific black duck and I want to make sure that that's the bird I'm seeing. I can directly click on Merlin and it takes me to the Merlin page for that bird. So it's really, really cool. And it works really, really well. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have an Indian example to give with the checklist, but I'll just finish that off, sorry. Um, yeah, cool. So that's one aspect of the Merlin app, which is that it's kind of like a mobile field guide uh, with photographs and audio, right? Um, the other very cool feature of the Merlin app is that I can identify species uh, using the Merlin app. Um, one way to do it is to use this start bird ID feature. So let me, um, so let's say we had a green wobbler on the list earlier, um, if you remember. So if I put in Udupi Karnataka and I go back to my list date, which was November 28th, I click next. The bird was really tiny, right? I saw a little wobbler in the trees. It was really tiny. What I noticed was that it was green. So I'll click green. I noticed it had whitish wing bars, but I wasn't very sure. So even with this minimum kind of exam, like information, um, let's say I click on white and I click on next. Um, and I saw it up in a tree, right? So in trees or bushes, I click next and then give me the list of the possible birds. Uh, it'll populate the list for what I'm likely to see where I am. So you can see the most likely bird, of course, is common tailor bird. Again, the likelihood of what is uh, of, of the bird is based on, on eBird data. So the, the eBird data obviously shows that, um, that well, common tailor bird is the most common bird in UDP, but the next best option is a green wobbler. Um, Ashwin very made a good point. I should probably show how to sort show likely species by location. So for example, if you come to Tasmania, <laughs> oh well, I'll just go back to South India actually. So if you go into South India and you go to um, Udupi, uh, what are the most likely birds you're likely to see, right? So if you go in location, click on Udupi Karnataka again, and I sort by most likely, I can click done. And it'll show me what are the most likely birds for that area. So the likely birds today, today being, what date is it? 27th April um, in Udupi would be these birds. So for example, red whiskered bulbuls are most likely. And as I go further down, I get to Indian Pitta, which um, I know a lot of you have stopped listening to, but supposedly still exists in Manipal for a while. Um, and so on and so forth until I get to my least likely birds down here. So it's really, really nifty. Um, if I want to go to Udupi and I want to only look at the birds that I haven't seen and how likely they are, I can hide the birds which are already on my life list. It seems I've seen all of the likely birds. How nice is that? So I'll, <laughs> so I'll change that to, uh, to let's say Victoria. Right. Okay, so there's a lot of birds in Victoria that I haven't seen and so on and so forth. So really, really cool feature. Um, so, oh, sorry, I'll just have a look at what RS has to say. Oh, I see Matt has actually answered the question. Um, but okay, any questions so far? Um, 
Um, there were two questions. One yes. was from uh, Lakshmi Kant Neve. He was yes. asking how can one encourage others to rate their uh, photographs? How can one encourage? <sighs> That's a million dollar question, I think. But look, I think if you if you go out and rate others' photographs, at least there are options. So there's things like the quizzes and all, which I think make you rate photographs. If you take the, the eBird quiz, I think we'll get to this towards the end. Hey, really nice, nice question. We'll note that down and I'll get back to it. And I think a lot of you can actually get back to it because these ideas would be interesting all around. Um, and um, RSS uh, question, do you want to just uh, uh, talk about that uh, quickly? The metadata being uh, entered in right. the checklist. Do you want me to read it out? Uh, no, I can read it. So till now, what I used to check in metadata is what I had observed the bird doing in the field instead of what's happening in the image. So if I have to correct it for my previous images, do I have to go through all the checklists individually or is there any better option? Um, Matt has answered that really well. Um, okay. I'll just go through Matt's. Ah, okay. So Matt has basically mentioned that um, there's multiple places that you can add um, all these, uh, the metadata. And so there's obviously the filters uh, or the, the little check checklists and things. Um, that's it. It's a very really complex question. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to read Matt's answer also. Um, I think I let Matt speak, if that's possible, about the other thing he's mentioned for RS. Is that okay, Subhadra? Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I was stalling a little bit about answering the exact question. Just wanted to let people know that there are different places where you can add information. Um, getting to this the specific question of the best way to add metadata specific to the media, uh, the best and, and really only way is, the best way is to go to a checklist where you know you have many images and then go to manage media and then just add add notes to each individual photo. Is that, does that make sense, Ramit? Yep, absolutely does. Yes. Um, also note, I mean, even within checklists, you can add comments to add any other notes you want to add about the sightings if you've seen. So if you've seen five birds of which one you photographed, um, so you would add in the photograph section, the information about that particular individual, but about the general, in the behavior you notice for all birds or not at the time of photographs um, can be uh, entered in the checklists, uh, checklist comments. Um, right. So I'll just go to that green wobbler again. And I, I want to go through the green wobbler thing because I, I discovered something um, earlier about the green wobbler image I had. Um, so again, I pick a, with a wobbler, I saw a wobbler, uh, it was a tiny little wobbler in U2P um, on November 28th in 2011. Um, it had green tones on it. it I saw the white wing bar um, and I saw it in the trees. So it'll give me on the basis of likelihood, on the basis of eBird frequencies, what bird I'm most likely to see. So common tailor bird is the default choice, which is correct. Uh, I know it wasn't the one. Um, it was a green warbler. Um, so I select, this is my bird. Um, now I have a good photograph of this warbler that we had seen earlier. And I go on photo ID. In this case, I think you have to download. So when you get the Merlin app, there's actually an option called photo ID and you have to download photo ID separately. Uh, just remember that. Uh, I think and every now and then there's an option to update photo ID as well. I think every, when they, they run the models again and again, you can choose to update the photo ID. Um, and it gives you better results with every update. So with photo ID, I'm going to take a photo. And you can see my bird here the photo of the bird. I use this photo. I put it in the box. That should do it. And I click next. I did not see it in Ambleside, which is where I live. I saw it in Udupi. I saw it on November 28th. And I asked it to identify the bird. And it'll give me Blythe Street Wobbler. Right? Um, again, it gives me Blythe Street Wobbler as the most 
likely choice. It could also give me booted wobbler or something. But um, the idea being that it's most likely according to the the most confidence, the most confident match for Merlin was Blythe Street Wobbler. And the less the other options it turned up with are booted wobbler and Sykes Wobbler on the basis of my location and the season. But it's pretty confident that it's a Blythe Street Wobbler. I click on this is my bird. And I can go on to either explore more about this bird, in which case I can listen to the call to make sure that's what I what it was. I can just go into ID another bird. And um, just to give another example, uh, for example, it could be this bird here, which is a bronze strongo. Click next. Again in Udupi. Pity I have to change this again and again. Number 28 and identify. And bronze strongo is the answer. So um, it's it's remarkably accurate. Um, there are uh, every now and then, I think some some birds it will fail to identify every now and then um, with the same degree of confidence as the examples I gave. For example, this green wobbler when I tried, um, I think came up as the third or the fourth option. Um, but again, it's a difficult image. And I think so. I want to allude to the point here that Merlin trains. It's uh, the model on which the algorithm on which the on which Merlin runs. It gets trained by the photos you add to eBird. Um, so very simply put, the more images of that of a bird on eBird, uh, the more likely Merlin is to be able to identify it later. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. In that note, uh, there is one question yeah. from Stefan. Uh, no. Stephen used to upload a lot of like uh, low quality uh, images also of uh, common birds. Is that uh, of any use? Absolutely. Um, I think regardless of the quality, if you go through most of my photos, you'll realize they're absolute crap. But I do them in the knowledge that I know <laughs> that Merlin at least will be able to use them and make something of it. Um, so regardless of the quality, um, regardless of the, the angle of the bird, regardless, so, you know, even this green wobbler, it's not the most ideal angle. Um, I'll stop sh sharing my phone screen for a second. Actually, hang on a second. back to my desktop so even this green wobbler for example um or this this blight street wobbler here all of these angles and the low quality of image they're all equally important and in the end they go a long way in in training merlin and in fact um i would recommend and maybe drew or matt could correct me is is just honestly make use of the 10 mb uh storage limit make use of the fact that you can add 10 images of each species uh, just add them, make sure you get as many angles in, make sure you get as many uh, photos in, regardless of the quality, so that it can train the Merlin models better. And that way, the app that you just saw makes better, you know, gives better returns um, overall, um, which obviously has um, a lot of impact on the data quality, um, you know, coming back to um, the way I see it, Merlin's really, really cool because when an amateur birder or you know someone who's just generally you know like people like me people like you when whenever there's a confusing bird um merlin is remarkably accurate and i think the more accurate it is the more accurate your lists are the more accurate your ids are um and i've been to completely new countries and places where without merlin i would have not survived and i've used merlin exclusively in those places um on that note actually That's the Merlin web page. Um, you can also, if you want to look at what images to, um, I'm going to paste this to the chat. What images are the target species for India? This is, I believe, uh, this is updated, last updated in March 2020. So this is where the target species for the media in India are. And if you happen to have these, uh, the list of these targets, then it'll be great if you could add them to your checklists and add them to the overall Macaulay library. Um, and they'll be used in training Merlin as well. Um, I see Drew's active again. Um, I'll just, 
there's one thing that really excites me. I started noticing it in my in my Explore Media page. There were little percentages that came up um, with um, every image, and I could see that uh, that Merlin was running its models on every single image that was being added to ML, and um, and gave a confidence number for each image. So I think in the future, at some point, and maybe Matt and Drew can sort of elaborate on this a bit. Um, they plan on every image you upload, um, it'll be run through Merlin and Merlin can sort of either uh, reiterate that you are, that's the correct ID or suggest a different ID for the images you add. So actually Drew sent me the screenshot um, of these birds and you can see he's added these images and it's Merlin's already recommended that this is indeed a lesser violet ear or in this case, it's a sparkling violet ear and so on and so forth. And I think this will be an amazing uh, move and towards better data quality um, overall. So your images, regardless of the quality, regardless of the angle of the birds, um, are just really, really important. And I would just encourage you to upload as many as you can. Cool. I think that's mostly it. Um, there's the how to encourage ratings. I think we would, I would, it would rather be a good topic for discussion. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, are there any other questions at the moment? Uh, I think we can even bring uh, Matt and Drew and maybe Ashwin or anybody else who wants the audio to be available. Um, so yeah, we can could, could we unmute Drew? Sorry? Uh, can we, yeah, I was going to say, can we unmute Drew? Yeah, yes, please, uh, please do. And Ramad, I just asked, um, did, did you show a, an Explore Species page? I know you referenced it when you were on your phone. Ah, that's right. I didn't. I didn't get to it. Actually. So so if I go. Drew, if you would like to add in. Yeah, I just wanted to add that that uh, that preview that Ramit was showing of the uh, ID results uh, being available on um, the Manage Media page. That's uh, like an early preview that we're working on. Um, we're still. You know, testing the results because we want the we want the accuracy to be really high if we're giving people feedback right on that screen. Um, but the hope is, you know, sometime maybe this summer we'll be able to start incorporating you know live feedback uh, when any, anybody's uploading media um, with those Merlin results. Cool. Um. Thanks, Drew. So this is the Explore Species page. So in this case, the Blythe Street Wobbler page. And you'll see those same images that you see in Merlin over here. You'll see the, the identification text um, below it. Um, and if you click on the Listen thing, you'll see the, the Listen tab. You'll see recordings come up for that species under the appropriate category. right? So you have one song and two different types of calls. Of course, the Explore Species page also has the eBird map on it. Um, I can choose a region to show the weekly bar chart, and it also shows you your own observations with the photos and audio um, and what you've got on ML. And, and there's just so much. Um, really, honestly, if you've got time, especially in the lockdown days, I can spend a full holiday just sitting on the Explore Species page or the Explore, on the Explore page on eBird and, and do nothing else all day. Um, so just have a go, have a play with it, and you'll find new things every single time. Okay, yes, the, the spreadsheet I downloaded. Good question. Where does it go? I don't want to go into my downloads folder. <laughs> Actually. Sorry, my computer is being very slow. Um, in, while you are at it, I will just take this uh, question from uh, Lakshmi Khan Neve. Sometimes yes. reviewers ask uh, uh, details for review after three years. It's very, very difficult if uh, photos, audios are not uh, available at uh, that time. I think Ashwin will have to answer that or Ashwin will have to actually do a session on uh, review sometime. I'm not sure whether it is planned, Mithal. Uh, not yet, but can you can unmute Ashwin. Yeah, yeah, just unmute. Of course. Okay. 
entire session. So we discussed that. In a uh, we didn't hear you. Can you repeat it? Ashwin, can you repeat? Uh, so I said uh, we'll discuss this uh, in another session, maybe, which we'll have soon. Yeah. About how that to, would be better. Yeah, about review. We'll yes. stick to media this time. Yeah. Um, cool. So this is what my CSV looks like. It's a massive file, so it's taken a long time to open up. Um, but all my recent uploads, the uploads we just, um, well, the birds we uploaded together, they're all here, including the, oh no, I should remove it, shouldn't I? The Indian golden oriole, the invisible one in the background of the Indian peafowl image. Um, but I wanted to make a point about that because I used to do it initially and it's not the right thing to do. You know, sometimes I had images, especially of wader flocks and ducks, where there'll be a shoveler and the tufted duck in the same photo. And I'll put the same image up for both species. Um, and especially with this tagging system, um, it's better not to put uh, the same photo for multiple species. Instead, keep it to one species. So have the main front species and have the rest as a background species. Um, but yeah, any um, yeah, there's a lot happening in these in this file. And um, yeah, just I think download your own data and just figure out what you want to do with it. Um, but yeah. Cool. Any other questions? I'm going to shut this because it's making my computer pretty slow. Uh, so I think if you have any questions, uh, just uh, raise your hand and uh, maybe Subhadra can unmute and you can ask yourself. Um, before I move, sorry, before we move on, I just wanted to show you the, the photo and audio quiz here. Cause I know we discussed, how do you encourage others to rate your photos? If you have taken this quiz, um, this photo quiz, you would know that it asks you to, um, rate images each time. So for example, for O2P again, um, it'll give you a quiz. It'll ask you what species of bird it is. So for example, in this case, it's a greater Kukul. And then you can add a tag. In this case, none of these work and add a quality of the image and move on to the next question. So this is one very way of, one very good way of, and a very interactive way of, you know, rather than going through each image one by one, is you go to a quiz and you actually have a little quiz. Um, you select the right image. So in this case, it's none of the above. How sad would it be if I got it wrong? Um, click three or whatever quality you want, and you can move on. So, yeah, I'm not gonna bother. <laughs> but you get the idea. Before I get one wrong, I'm gonna move away from this page. Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll help you too, Rama. Um, <laughs> so if um, we, we, encourage, uh, we encourage people to rate media, um, it's very, very helpful as we go through and select images and audio uh, to use in Merlin and, uh, and other things. Uh, so if you go back to the, the media search page, um, one of the options is um, rather than sorting by best quality, uh, you can actually sort by uh, least number of ratings. Um, and that's a way, especially if you focus in on, on your particular district, um, that's the way to go through. And, and maybe somebody is a good photographer, but they're a little bit modest about adding ratings to their photographs. Uh, if you go through those least rated media, uh, it's a good way to, to add ratings and to, to help identify um, quality material. It's also, I do that sometimes uh, myself. Um, the managed media makes it easier to see when you forget to add ratings, um, but I, I still sometimes forget. So occasionally, occasionally I'll use my media and then least number of ratings uh, to see if I've forgotten to rate any of my media. So in this case, I have a few that I haven't rated and this is my project for tonight. I'll finish rating them before I go to sleep. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right, um, any other questions? I think people can unmute themselves or raise their hands or something of that sort. 
explain about the quiz you just mentioned i didn't understand what quiz you mentioned okay so if i go on to explore right here there's a compare your no, there's a learn birding skills and in um, learn birding skills there's an ebird essentials which is a nice little course that you should take if you're generally not familiar with ebird um or even if you are actually there's always new things to learn there's merlin over here and there's a photo and sound quiz so if you click on photo and sound quiz oh you go into this page um and you click on start quiz and this is a great way of actually learning more about the um about the photos of i mean birds in your area also as well as like generally looking at nice photos and audio so let's say i click on bangalore um i start the quiz and it'll give me images of birds which i found in bangalore so this image for example is clearly a white rumped shama i'm not kidding um so indian robin and then i can rate this image and it'll go to the next quiz this is a forest wagtail and so on and so forth so you get the idea of how this works but it's a nice fun way of doing it so in this case it's see every now and then there's a tricky question also so there's none of the above and so on and so forth oh yeah it's fun it's good fun yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. thanks uh, to add to this uh, this quiz is also a nice uh, way um, in, to um, familiar, familiarize yourself uh, with birds of a new area so if you're going to northeast a specific area you can actually take this quiz prepare yourself so that you get slightly better than uh, better before you go there to go id Thanks. Absolutely, and even with even with audio, um, but yeah. Um, do the reviewers also validate the rating? No, reviewers have the the only job of reviewers is to look at the data you actually input in terms of and just just making sure that you know um, all birds which should have documentation have documentation. Yes. Um, yeah, I think. Are we are we all done in that case? I'm all done in terms of what I had written down in my agenda list. So, um, can I add one last thing, really quickly? Yes, sure. One more. Yes, please. One more. Uh, one more plug for uh, rating media. Um, so, um, between now and the end of June, uh, the Macaulay Library is having a, a friendly contest to encourage people to uh, to rate more audio recordings. Uh, so, I'll, I'll share a link. Uh, the general idea is that if you if you rate 150. Audio recordings between now and the end of June, um, you become eligible um, to win uh, a free subscription to the the new Birds of the World. Um, so um, anybody that does 150 or more ratings, we will draw uh, one name from all of those uh, record raters. So Ramitz, uh, he has the the link up there, and I'll I'll share it again here. So. Now is uh, now is a good time, as Ramit said, to just uh, kind of explore and and maybe lose yourself in uh, photos and audio from from around the world. The contest is specifically for audio. Thanks, Matt. Yes, I forgot in that part. And uh, Matt, since you are there, uh, just one question, which everybody asks uh, us, that uh, when will be uh, when will when will be uh, it available? For everyone to add videos to eBird, I mean, right now I think it's available only for a test group. But when will be it available to a larger audience? That is a good question. Um, so video is uh, it's a bit more complicated than photographs. Uh, the the limit, uh, the file size limit for a single video is 250 megabytes, and uh, you if you have video upload, you can upload uh, up to 10 videos uh, per observation. Uh, so the um, the, the tools needed to, to support uploading and then also storing that, uh, it's quite substantial. So we're still uh, still investigating um, ways to, to bring that to a broader community. And I would say um, stay tuned in the coming months. 
um, and we'll be sharing news about expanding that that um, that option. Sorry, I don't have a more specific answer, but um, something that we're still still investigating. Thank you, ma'am. I think uh, FT and all the others, you can um, upload your videos on YouTube and you can uh, always uh, copy the embedded link in your uh, species comments. So that is the best for now you can do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if you do that, I saw, I saw somebody mention uh, deleting, deleting their video from their laptop. Um, the word delete always makes me nervous. Um, if uh, with any type of media, we always encourage you to, uh, to store a copy on, a, on an external hard drive uh, so that you always have that as a backup. Um, so whether you upload to Macaulay Library or you upload to YouTube, always make sure you keep uh, one copy of the original for yourself uh, for a, a worst case scenario. Thank you. Okay, so. Yeah. Do we have anything, any questions on Facebook? Nisha? Okay, I can't see Nisha. I went through all of them. I don't think we have any more. But I'm just checking one last time. But I think we can answer them later as well. I mean, the post is always going to be there. So yeah, I had one query. I mean... What percentage of birds images uh, did we get for Indian birds? I mean, through in which when we apply the bird image to ID it in Merlin app. Uh, Ramit, are you there? Yeah, good, good question. Um, I know that um, almost all of the Indian birds are now represented on the Merlin app. How many birds can be ID'd or how um, out of those? I am not sure. I think Drew might be able to answer. But, I yeah, mean, so the, uh, the pack includes uh, 1,267 species. Um, and then I kind of forget what the overlap is with the photo ID tool. Um, basically, anything with 10 or more images in Macaulay Library is included wow. in the latest photo ID model that can identify about 8,000 species. Um, so it should include most of the species that are, are being photographed in, in India. Um, the, the really rare ones that we don't have photographs, um, we'll have to wait until more photographs are uploaded to add them. Yeah, thanks, God, God my answer. All right. Um, Mahati is asking uh, if you can talk about how to edit photos. <laughs> um, I think what she's referring to is, um, so basically, um, don't edit your photos too much, which is, I mean, um, it's only fair. Um, you want to see the bird as it was um, in the field, especially for the archival purposes. So in general, a uh, good recommendation would be besides the usual brightness and contrast kind of settings and, and cropping to make the bird bigger in the frame. Um, I would recommend not editing too much, um, especially for the purpose of uploading your images to the e checklists. Okay, so I and, think oh, our time is I... Yes, sorry. I just, I just wanted to uh, echo what, what Ramit said. Uh, the same thing applies for audio. Um, we, uh, we have uh, detailed guidelines, but in general, we, we encourage uh, very limited editing of audio, uh, basically just removing uh, any loud handling noise at the very beginning or the end of the recording. Um, so trimming the recording down to the focal species. Um, raising the level of the recording and then that that's it um, we strongly discourage the use of uh, any type of noise reduction tool uh, because that can modify the sound recording in in unknowable ways and we, we think of sound recordings and photos as being uh, data among other things so when you start doing strong editing uh, it can be modifying the data and um, 
can cause problems for people that might want to use that data for research purposes. I'll, sh I'll share links to uh, our guidelines for both photo and audio editing. All right, I think if you have any more questions, you can always write to us. And uh, thank you for joining in. Thank you, Ramit. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Drew, for joining in. I know it's too early for you, maybe 7.30 a.m. or so. That's well, great. Great to see all of you. I really, really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, so if you have any questions for Ramit, uh, just a minute. You can say my screen has stuff. Okay, you can write to him. Uh, yes. And uh, I hope you can see my screen. No. I can't, little, yeah. Yeah? No. Nope. No, Mittal. Share again. Okay, one sec. Uh, Ramit, have you stopped sharing? Yes. Oh, I don't know. It stops sharing by itself. Yes, I can't I can't share anymore. But I think in the middle, Mittal was sharing. But, yeah. yeah. So just a minute. I'm just trying to find. But... If you want, here's my email address. It's in the chat thingy here. Um, That's easy. Yeah. Can I ask one quick question? Yes. Yeah. So basically, my question is, if I'm using somebody else's image in case of rarities or when it is required, and that person is not using eBird, but credit goes to me, so what should I do in that case? Um. I would strongly advise not use that image at all um, and link it to wherever the image is. Um, alternatively, what you could, so there's, look, okay, so my general principle for this is don't use images which are, which are not taken by you. Um, if, so even in cases where, for example, my wife, who's not a birder, but every now and then she'll take my camera and take images while I make sound recordings. Um, I'll, I've made her an eBird account and I will share the list with her. So you could either encourage that person to come onto eBird and then share the list with him and ask that person to actually, or him or her, and ask that person to upload the image there. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, generally the, the, the bottom line would be, if it's not your image, don't upload it. Under Should your not name. use it. Okay, got it, got it. Thanks a lot. Yeah. All right, uh, thank you everyone. Uh, time to say goodbye. Bye, everybody. All right. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thanks, Robert. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Subhadra. Thanks, Misha. Bye.